Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Simon and in this video we are talking about hiking gear that I am selling and why I'm doing that. So apologies for the clickbaity title. I've got the box of stuff here and I'm going to talk about one tent, one sleeping bag and one sleeping mat. So if that's the kind of thing that you enjoy, do hit a like on the video and do consider subscribing. Let's jump into it. So first of all, the why then, why am I looking at selling some of my camping gear? I think one of the main reasons is to save some space and just to kind of get rid of a few of things. I seem to have three of everything. I've got three tents, three sleeping bags, three sleeping mats. And although for some of you that might not be very much and for some that might be quite a lot, I just don't feel like I need some of that stuff and I'm not really using it. So what this lockdown period has actually enabled me to do here in the UK, UK lockdown is just to kind of do a bit of an audit on the stuff that I have and see what I really need and what I don't. And I'll put a link of a video that I posted above. But the way I like to kind of finance or like pay for a lot of my gear, because as we know, it can be quite expensive, is just to buy and sell stuff. And in that way, it kind of freshens up the channel. It allows me to show you guys what new bits of gear that I'm using. And also just helps to me, me to afford things and experience new things and then kind of tell you guys about those experiences and 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 produce content around that so I can give you my experience of what I've been using. And in that way, it means I get to try new gear and new things, which is fantastic. First up then is the tent. So it's the Berghaus Peak 3.1. Now this is nostalgic for me. I bought this tent around August, 2018. I remember that because it was the first ever tent that I bought. And I don't think they make this tent anymore. And if you look on websites like Millets and Blacks, which are the main stockists for Berghaus tents, they only have red tents and they're all kind of geodesic or semi-geodesic semi tents. Actually comments below if you know the reason why Berghaus are no longer really selling tents. I just don't know whether they've sold out. I don't think that is the reason. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, the tents they are selling are just red ones um, at the sort of one, two person level. Obviously they're selling much bigger family tents still. So they don't sell any of this version and they're all red as well. So interestingly, this was red and was obviously new at that time to wild camping and, and sort of wasn't necessarily aware of what I was buying, but I'd heard of Berghaus and thought it was a good company and with good quality. So I wanted something decent. So at the time, I think it cost me around 60 pounds, maybe a little bit less than that. And a similar tent to this now is the OEX Bobcat One. It's a really extremely similar design. As I said, you can't really buy this tent anymore in the Berghaus brand. Um, and now it's selling for about 110 pounds, which just sounds crazy. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the details, but it weighs, it weighs around 1.9 kilograms. I'll put the dimensions up now. Um, but it's a fantastic little tent. I really enjoyed it. As I said, my first ever one, so it's a bit nostalgic for me. I've got a Lanchan One Pro Wild Country Helm 2, and I'm looking at purchasing more tents in the future, let's be honest. So, and I, I'm not sure whether I'll actually keep hold of the, the other tents that I have, but certainly this is one that is really redundant at the moment and I don't really use it. So it was a fantastic first buy for me, a good beginner tent, a good entry level tent, I'd say. And, but I just don't need it at the moment. So that's one of the reasons, that there are some of the reasons why I'm getting rid of it. I just bought a red tent, so like a really loud color, isn't it? But um, and to be honest, it looks really wicked on film and stuff, that kind of color. So it's, it's, I wouldn't necessarily not buy a tent just because of the color. The other point to mention on this tent is it's not freestanding. It needs to be pegged out in order to pitch it successfully. It, it wouldn't stand on its own in any way. So the big three is typically the tent, the sleep system and the backpack. And that's not quite what I'm talking about here today. I'm not selling any backpacks, um, but I am selling a sleeping mat in place of that. So that's kind of maybe two and a half. Next up then is the sleeping bag. So it's the Van Gogh Senen 250. So that's one of the reasons why I'm turning it because it's absolutely massive. I remember buying, this is my first ever sleeping bag and it weighs 1.65 kilos, which is heavy in itself really for a sleeping bag. And, but it's massive. You can, you can see the size of it there. So it would just fill up most of my pack. And when I was new to wild camping, I wasn't sort of making use of things like the compression strap. So if you pull on these, you can actually condense it down quite a lot, but still it was a huge item for my backpack at the time. At the time I had an Osprey Talon 46 litre, I think, backpack. So it was pretty small in terms of capacity. So putting something like this in it was a big deal. It took up a lot of space. So since this 
bag, I've bought a Rab Neutrino XL, which is, so this is synthetic. This is a down bag and it's much lighter. I think it weighs less than 900 grams, obviously much more expensive. This cost around 40 pounds, I think at the time. I don't, I have no idea how much these cost now. Um, and Van Gogh do this useful thing. So they put suggested uses on the side. So it says minus one, degrees C to 20 degrees C. It's quite a broad range, but that's what they're suggesting would be a suitable range for this bag. Another reason this bag wasn't really big enough for me, I'm quite tall, so this bag didn't really fit me. So I've got an XL version of the Rab Neutrino and that's working really well. I've also got a Rab synthetic bag, which is the Solar 3, I think it is. And I've yet to, I've used that once so far out in the field and I wanna give that a good try once we can go out camping again on April 12th. So for me, this was just a little bit too heavy, a little bit too large, but otherwise a really decent sleeping bag and definitely a good sort of entry level sleeping bag. Cheers boys. Coffee. Camera keeps jumping around, it's because the light, it keeps, I've got it on a fruit bowl. If you could see what I could see, it's just madness. It keeps falling over, sorry about that. So next up is the Berghaus Peak self-inflating sleep pad. It's got a really cool valve, which you click once and it draws air in. So it's not fully self-inflating. You do have to add a certain amount of air yourself. So it's a little bit misleading, but of course you'd expect that, right? It's not gonna blow up on its own and press the valve again and it closes off the air so it can't escape. Really good sleep bag, good starter. It's a little bit too thin. It's about 183 centimeters wide. The insulation properties aren't fantastic and it's about 650 grams, a little bit on the heavy side. The pack size is relatively small, so that's a good point. It's the smallest out of all the items I've spoken about today. Um, red again, of course. And the reason I'm selling is I got I got a new sleeping pad, so I did the coast to coast in September 20, 2019, and bought the Thermarest Neo Air sleep pad, which is a lot lighter and has much better insulation properties, and it's thicker, it's more comfortable. So I did I then didn't need this one, and I probably only used this one like three or four times. So. That's kind of the main reason I'm selling it. It's um, one thing I do like about it, it does have like this resistant material on the top. It stops you slipping off of it, which is really good. And actually I've already sold it. Berghaus are still selling it and you can go buy it through outlets like Millets. I also got sent the Trekology UL80, which is about four inches thick. By comparison, this is 30, or sort of rather three centimeters thick. So it is really quite small. Sorry, I'm mixing up dimensions there, but I'm not gonna do the conversion. But, um, and then the pack size is about 20 centimeters by 14 centimeters. So as mentioned, it is quite small there. So I actually only own one pack as it currently stands. So the backpack I use is the Osprey Exos 48 liter. I'm, I'm considering swapping it at that out and I'm actually about to press the button on my next backpack. So that will be imminent. So, and the pack I had before that was the Osprey Talon as mentioned. So. In my view, that was a better pack. And one of the reasons for that was it was a similar weight. It's slightly smaller, so it's slightly easier to carry. I find with the Exos, it being that much higher, it knocks on the back of your head, which is, you'd expect that from a higher pack, it's gonna sit higher up because it has a larger capacity. It also had a clip belt on the bottom of the pack. So two, the two sections on the bottom of the pack where you can attach things to the outside of it actually had a, a section that, that clips in on each side. So it felt more secure, whereas the, um, the Exos 48 doesn't doesn't have that, and then we know the Exos 48, the new version of it doesn't have the hilt belts, which the old version has. So, so kind of some drawbacks there, but that's an example of one other item which I sold to then buy the Exos 48. Don't regret it because the 48 is a much larger pack and it is a really good pack. But as mentioned, I'm looking at getting something a lot bigger for, that I can use in winter and put essentially put more things in so I can keep more, warmer in the winter months. So that's the video, guys. That's it for this one if you've got any comments about anything i've described you know what are you using are you do you kind of sell stuff or do you keep a lot of stuff and how much stuff do you have i'd be interested here so drop some comments below hit a like on the video if you enjoy it if you're new do subscribe i've got loads more content coming up in the coming weeks and we're going to be able to go out wild camping soon so it will it will mix things up a bit it's a slightly different video normally i'm outside so this one's obviously indoors but hopefully you've enjoyed it take care guys and i'll see you on the next one peace